Stubbies, it's Heather here. Gonna go ahead and shoot today or tonight's video, however you want to word it. It's almost 2 a.m. Well, not really. It's just a little after one, actually. But anyways, uh, yeah. Uh, I can't get a hold of, uh, kind of nobody right now to kind of talk to. Um, or anybody, should I say. Uh, not that I'm really in the mood to talk. Anyways, I'm kind of sitting here watching TV. But I can't get a hold of Nomon to talk to him. And so, we just finished talking maybe 30 minutes ago. But I had to cut my phone off because it's acting all retarded and wonky and interference and all kinds of shit like that. So, I had to cut it off. That way, it could kind of pick up signal again. And I don't know. And then living as far out as I do, mainly in Hickville. Well, the connection is worse than where it was when I lived <laughs> in my apartment. So, yeah. But, uh, we got some woods around here. So, I mean, we ain't out in the boondocks, but still. Um, I actually probably need to check on Eddie. I don't know how long it's been since I talked to him last. That's what happens is like, that. that's the reason like I like feeling busy like that where like I'm just constantly kind of in this flow of things and stuff. Because I can't do anything about like my bigger problems right now. Like, um, my grandmother, I need a paper from her that way I can figure out about if I can get back on Medicaid, that way I can have my leg looked at because there's no way in hell that I'm going back to fucking work with my leg fucked up. I ain't doing it. I did it for three and a half fucking years. And I don't, it's like almost every fucking night, my hip and my leg hurts. It's like just a pain. A, and it's not really a sharp pain, but it's just, it's just like, I feel like I constantly want somebody to rub my whole entire leg and especially my foot and my ankle. Like, cause the nerves is all fucked up from it and everything then <sighs> I'm like mad at myself because of my past and shit because I'm like damn it you know and I should have went you know and I didn't really I only had one person actually offered that uh uh it was the same woman that first started taking me whenever uh, my kid got taken custody of by my parents and shit and she's like well, I have this doctor. You need to go to them. That's all she said was like a recommendation. And I was like, no. I was like, I need to go to this other place, to a different city because of specialists, basically. I was like, because down here, every time, it's, it's always a mess. It's always just like this gangled up fucking mess of bullshit and everybody's like we don't know what's wrong with you there's nothing wrong with you we don't see anything wrong with you and then that's like even my damn daughter when she was young and this boy grabbed her arm and twisted it back behind her and twisted her whole entire like wrist up and like you know her hand like that back behind her and then he hauled off and karate chopped her forearm while he ha had her hand like that and she told me that everything popped in her hand, like everything, every joint in her wrist and her hand popped when he did that. And that it felt real tingly and real numb for a real long time. Then it like went completely numb for a while. And because it didn't hurt, the teachers seen no reason to contact me or anything or to have her seen by anybody or anything like that. And still to this day, all these years later, my daughter has a problem with her wrist. And it's just fucking ridiculous. But then I found out through taking her to some doctors when I could, which granted she wasn't going as often as she needed to. And I doubt very seriously that my parents have continued to take her for her to see because they recommended her have a spinal tap done so that way we could see if she had one of three cartilage diseases that children can have, but it is very rare. And then it would make a bunch of sense because when I was little, I'm like, I don't know, when I was like from probably about nine to 11, my kneecaps 
and my knees and my femur bones and my ankles, but mainly my kneecaps, like my knees and my kneecaps. It literally felt like somebody was beating them with a hammer nonstop. Like, and it always happened like at night. It was always like when the sun went down. And nobody could understand it except for my dad because my dad had the same pain when he was a kid. So what the fuck that is, I have no idea. And um, I, I literally remember sitting there trying to tell my mom how bad my knees was hurting when I was like, you know, eight or nine, I guess. And she's just like ignoring me and kind of like screaming at me to shut up, you know, like, oh, you'll be fine. Hush, I'm tired of hearing about it. And then I remember sitting there like crying. And, like, the third time I was sitting there crying about my knees hurting because they'd hurt for hours on end. And I couldn't do nothing to relieve any type of pain. I could take Tylenol. It wouldn't help. I could put a heating pad on. It wouldn't help. I could put a blanket on. It wouldn't help. I could put ice on. It wouldn't help. Nothing would help. And even though I kind of hated my dad and had a shitty-ass relationship with him, and then he's, like, been perverted. And I, bleh, but anyways, like... He was the only one that, like, the third time, like, my legs was hurting like that. Like, he he walked through, like, I think, to go to the kitchen to get something to eat, to take it to his bedroom. And he looked over at me, and he was like, Heather, why are you crying? And I was like, my knees are fucking killing me, you know. And he's like, well, come back here, you know. And I went back and sat on the edge of the bed and was like, what? You know, and he's like, lay down. And I'm like, why? You know, like. And he's like, I'll rub your legs, I'll rub your knees. And I was like, okay, you know. And he'd, he'd rub my knees, you know, and then he'd sit there and he'd get like a pillow and he'd tell me to put a pillow between my legs to keep my knees from knocking and that he thought that it was maybe where we were so big boned or whatever that when we would sleep at night, the night before or previously, like our knees would knock together and he told me that that's one way that he would comfort his knees when he was a boy and it happened to him and shit like that. And he'd sit there and he'd rub my knees. And I'd end up falling asleep as he was rubbing my knees because, I mean, he was the only one offering to do anything about it to relieve any type of pain or what the fuck ever, even though. And so it was just all fucked up. But, um... And then I'm sitting there because I don't trust my dad and everything, trying to not vomit, basically. And so then, because you're exhausted, you know, like mentally, you're trying to not vomit. You're trying to trust this person that you have no fucking trust for, but they're the only person that's willing to help you, you know. You kind of just, I don't know. But, uh, so anyways... I had that go on, my dad had that go on, then my daughter, um, well my mom, uh, her side of the family, there's rheumatoid arthritis, then I spoke before in a video about how like, it doesn't matter how skinny I get, <laughs> I'm gonna have big ankles and big wrists forever, and I've actually looked it up, and there are some people that can have like a higher bone density than others, and then that can actually lead to more problems like osteoporosis and stuff like that even worse and things like that and so it would just explain a lot and then not only that a uh, cartilage it's a cartilage disease if my daughter does happen to have it that they were recommending that they thought that she might have because the pain still is still bothering her and stuff and it would explain a lot even dealing with me when I grew up and stuff because um my sister hauled off and punched me one time and I used to get lockjaw real bad from it. And oh my God, if you ain't ever had lockjaw, you don't know what the fuck that shit feels like. Like, it literally feels like somebody took an ice pick, basically, and like shoved it up inside your fucking jaw and like right beside your ear. And it makes your ear hurt too. It makes you feel like you got a fucking earache. And you, you can't close your fucking mouth. Like, you're just like, for hours until it finally decides to like pop back and go to place and that shit happened for like three to five years after she hauled off and hit me and <sighs> oh god <laughs> ah, 
She better be so glad I've never hit her back. That's all I can say. Because I have a lot of pent up anger towards her. But anyways. Oh, God, do I. But, um. <clears throat> she has smacked me in the face at least 18, 25 damn times. She has hauled off and punched me probably anywhere from two to three times, once in the face and like twice probably on the shoulder or the leg or the thigh. <sighs> but I tackled her and about strangled her to death once, so I guess that makes us even. I mean, you know, everybody reaches their feel of shit. You can't take it no more. You kind of snap. But, um... <clears throat> She ain't touched me since then. And I'm not really proud about it, but I am for the fact that she don't touch me since then. So. <sighs> Can't really blame her. I wouldn't want to touch nobody like that either. <coughs> um, but anyway, so... It would just make a bunch of sense if we do have, like, some cartilage disease possibly running in our family and we didn't know about it and it ended up passing to my daughter and it came from my dad's side of the family with our knees hurting the way that they have and stuff like that. And then I can't, um, because cartilage can affect, you know, your bone, like, where your bones are coming together and all that. So that's the reason I say, for as far as our knees hurting and stuff like that. And, uh, even my hip and... Because, um, uh, pretty sure my dad fractured my tailbone once. Like, almost 100% certain. Uh, I couldn't sit straight for the longest. And ever since then, I've always had a problem. And I even have a tender spot, <laughs> basically, that is, uh, on my lower back before, like, you reach my ass at, like, and it's a dark spot, and I think it's honestly where he took the cord and uh, hit me with it, and where it hit me, and it bruised me, and it also cut and made like a scratch or a gash. And uh, so I have a dark spot there, and that's how that's how I know it's there is because my kid. This was just a few years ago. We sitting in my apartment, our apartment that I had for us. And I was like, ooh, scratch my back. And so I lift my shirt up, and she's, like, scratching the top of my back. She goes, Mommy. And I said, yeah. And I was like, what is it? What is it? Something on my back? Like, I started freaking out. And she's like, you have this dark spot here. And I'm like, huh? And she's like, you have this dark spot here. And I'm like, you know, and I'm like, how, how big is it? How little is it? What are you talking about? You know, and she just touched it. And when she did, like, I mean, you talking about, like, something sensitive, you know, that just you're like, oh, fuck, no, don't touch that, you know. And, like, I literally, she, like, touched it, and, like, I, I was like, you know, and I was like, oh, my God, don't do that again. And she, she kind of did slightly again, and, like, tears just started rolling down my face, you know. And I was like, don't, you know. And she's like, what is it? And I'm like, I don't, I don't know. I think it's where Papa hit me with a damn, uh fucking cord once and I feel like you know it done something to my spine if you will at the lower back and shit and I was like so don't no 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 you know I was like don't 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 ever touch that again and then that's even um another spot on me or whatever is uh <laughs> It's where I have a uh, double crown is what they call it or whatever or what my sister tries to call it or what the fuck ever now and shit. But what actually happened was I busted my head open and nobody gave a shit. That's exactly what the fuck happened and I know where it happened at. Uh, me, my best friend, I'll spend the night with her and her little brother and I was a little muscle woman or what the hell ever. And uh, we was out at Kmart with her mom. And so I used to piggyback her or her brother all the time, like separate. Well, she ha had the grand idea at some point in time to for me to piggyback both of them. So she'd be on my shoulders, but he'd be on her shoulders. And, I mean, I was like 10, maybe. 
and <laughs> she's 10 or 9 or whatever, and her brother's like 4, 5, maybe. I don't know. I don't know the age difference between them. Or no? Yeah, yeah, he's like 5. I think they're like 4 years apart. And, uh... Or he might have been younger than that. And hell, I might have been younger than that. I might have been seven. She might have been seven. And then that would have made him three. Anyways, we were somewhere around those ages. Because me and her was like almost a year apart. Or maybe not. Or I don't know. We was less than a year apart. There you go. We was less than a year apart. Might have only been a few months apart. I can't remember what year she was born or anything like that. But, uh... So, I'd done it once or twice like in the privacy of, like, her home, you know, and stuff like that. But I always, I was always the one <laughs> that was mentally preparing myself for the uh, base that I was fixing to make myself. Okay, so I had to be, like, eight at least because I didn't know that term until, like, I was eight because of cheerleading and it's like, hey, you're going to be the base of the pyramid because you can handle the weight, you know. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> you know? But anyways, uh, so, uh, anyways, uh, I, I was just used to being the base, you know, and like some, somebody that, you know, could be stepped on, basically. And, uh, <laughs> so, uh, in the privacy of her home, I was like, yeah, you know, let's, let's try this, you know, and we do it. And I'll be like, hell yeah, you know. And I'd take my time, like, getting them up on my shoulders, you know. And as a matter of fact, I think we would... I think, I think we'd only done it two times prior to this time that we fell, but, uh, and we never did it again after that, but, um, I think the first time he was, like, up real high, like, she went and stood on a table, and I backed up to the table, and she just climbed on top of me, and then he went and stood on top of something that made him pretty high up, and then he just climbed on top of her, and then whenever we went to go get down, I backed up over to the thing again to let him get down. And then I just picked her up and kind of pulled her over my head and set her down in front of me, if I remember correctly. Or maybe she climbed off backwards, too. I can't remember. Then the second time was the way that we ended up doing it in the store and we fell. But um, but that was the third time in the store. But um, he climbed on top of her, and then she climbed on top of me. And so... They're wobbling because she doesn't know how to keep her back straight and have him keep his back straight. And he's a little thing, too, so he doesn't understand the concept of it. And when they got on that second time and they got on like that, I remember being like, whoa, you know, and I was like, uh, maybe we shouldn't do this no more. And she's like, no, I just wanted to see if we could do it again because I told my, I think she said she'd told her mom about it or she'd tried to tell her mom about it or something or I don't know. And then, so, like, we were out at the damn store, and we was in the checkout aisle, and I was starting to grab up a bunch of bags to help carry them out or whatever, and they're all kind of, like, hanging on the thing and stuff, and I'm just like, you know, and, uh, I was, because I was spending the night with them, so, and, uh, like, or maybe, maybe she took me to cheer practice, and she was going to drive me back home, I don't know, I fucking can't remember, but anyways, uh, so we're standing there wearing fucking Kmart. I remember that much. <laughs> and I thought my mama was going to kill me because my mama worked at Kmart. I was like, well, I just signed my death certificate. Like, that's what went through my head when it happened. But uh, she's like, hey, you know, put me on your back. And I was like, huh? You know, and, I, and she's like, put me on your back. Put me on your shoulders. And I was like, okay. You know, like I didn't want to. And I was like, okay, you know, and she's like, oh, wait, wait, let him do what he did and let him climb on top of me and then you pick both of us up. And I was like, nah, I don't think that's a good idea. And not here, not right now, and plus your mom's getting ready to leave, we're fixing to leave. And she's like, yeah, come on, let's do it. Next thing I know, I'm standing there waiting on her mom to get done and they're pr like, I feel her leg come across and I'm just like, what the fuck? And I'm like leaned. And I know as like that's one thing you know about being a base, like you gotta be straight. You gotta you gotta be rigid, you know, like you become a board basically for somebody else to fucking step on. And so I like straightened up real quick. And when I did, I felt him like the weight, I felt them rock back. 
And so I was like, okay. And I just stood there and waited for a few seconds, holding on to her legs, like grasping her. And I was like, hey, um, is everybody good? Is everybody straight? Is everybody good? And she's like, yeah, yeah, but turn around and show my mom. Turn around and show my mom. And I'm like, are you certain? Everybody's good. And I was like, you know, to her brother, I don't want to say his name on the video, but I was just kind of like, well, don't be wobbling around up there. You know, like you will throw me off so bad, you know, and everybody's like, yeah, yeah, we're good and everything. And I'm like, okay. And I turned around and I actually stood there for about 15 seconds. And then all of a sudden I felt him to start wobbling. And I think he said he wanted down. And I went to, I was like, okay, let me turn back around so we can get y'all down. And he wobbled again. And when he did, I mean, there we went, just bam, you know, and all, all of us hit the fucking concrete floor, if you will. I mean, granted it had like, I don't know if it was just painted concrete or if it had tile on it, but either way, and it busted his head the fuck open and he had to go get stitches and there was blood everywhere. And then she, I think, fell on her arm or something, or I don't know. And she somehow, I, I don't know if she busted her head or not, probably. But me, I busted my head. And I knew that I did, but it wasn't as bad as his, so I wasn't care. You know, I didn't give a shit. And I think uh, we stayed there. They called the ambulance out, and then they went with the ambulance. But my mom come up there and got me. And, I mean, she worked there anyway, so, like, everybody knew me in the store or what the fuck ever. And, uh, so, uh, or not everybody, but enough. And, uh, I think I stayed there and they came and got me there. I don't think I went to the hospital with them. I think my parents got there before. I don't know. I don't really remember that much. But I remember my head hurting and I remember being like, ah. Oh. You know, and my head, you know, and I'm like, oh, God, you know, and everything. And I'd touch, and I'd pull away, and there'd be blood on my hand, you know. It wasn't a lot, but still. And uh, now, years later, I'm realizing that I probably should have had stitches, that apparently it was pretty damn bad, because now my hair is like, <laughs> you can tell that if, if you was trying to pull out a strand of hair where the place is where I hit my head back here, that root is going to be in my head probably about a good fucking half an inch, if not a damn inch. Like, it's it's in there. Good. It's rooted in good. <laughs> like, and it still grows. It don't cause me any problems. It don't cause me any pain, except for it knots up, like, back there sometimes. Uh, almost like a rat's nest or some shit, if I don't brush it really good and everything. But that's just something else that happened in my childhood that just, you know, I'm like, fuck, you know? I'm just like, damn, can't win for losing. And then I threw myself off some bleachers because of that same friend because she was my only friend. And then she just kind of walked off and left me one day. And, like, my dad, like I said, like, he was himself. And so a lot of abuse and neglect going on at home. And I was just like, yeah, I think I'm going to fucking kill myself. And I was like, if I, I wonder if I jump off the bleachers, if I fall and break my neck, and if angels will come and take my soul and carry it to heaven. Like, legit. Like, that, that's fucked up to know that I was that little and thinking shit like that. But, like, it's the truth. Man, is it the truth. So. But, luckily, I'm here and I'm alive and I'm still trying. And I got a beautiful daughter, so. <clears throat> but, um, anyway, so I don't know. They, they were supposed to have spinal tap done on her a few years ago, but they told us that they thought she was too young for it, dealing with my daughter, to see if she has the cartilage disease. And I don't know if she's had it done since she's been gone or not. I know that I asked them the past two years that I had her home because she was begging for it. Because she's like, yeah, I want to see if that's what's wrong with me, Mama. I want to see if that's what's wrong with me. Because she would, I mean, she'd break down and cry because of her wrist. The wrist that had got injured, you know, when she was like six, you know. Or younger. Hell, she might have been, I don't know how old she was in all honesty. I can't remember. But she was younger, a lot younger, basically. It's been bothering her for years. I don't know how many nights I just set up and I just rub her wrist. 
all night long until she'd fall asleep. Like, and then, and then the boy that did it, oh, he has anger issues. <laughs> that's, 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 that's the society we live in. Oh, he has anger issues. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah. So your anger issues came and talked to you and told you to put your hands on somebody just because you didn't like what the fuck they said to you. Because that's what happened. Like, my kid said something, and he didn't like it. So therefore... That means that you have to have a physical altercation with them. Like, who the fuck are your parents? Like, if that's the damn case, then I should have beat the shit out of every body I've ever met in my whole entire fucking life. Because I don't get along with people, I'll be honest. It's not pretty. But anyways, I try. <laughs> oh, I try, I try, I try. It's just like this uh, meme that uh, Nick shared on Facebook or whatever. He's like, uh, when you're crying and they think that you're crying because you're a pansy, but you're crying of their stupidity and you just want to beat the shit out of them or something along that line. I don't know what it said. And I was just like, oh, they don't know. I was like, they do not know. <laughs> they do not know. <laughs> How many times you just you just so mad? Oh, you just so mad. You just you just like there's no way there's no way life can be this shitty or there's no way that people can be this stupid. Like you just like it's almost like you you have a little insanity snap, you know, and you're just like can't be, you know. But anyways, then you're just like no, calm down, calm down. It's okay, calm down. And I actually watched this video today. It was talking about how uh, you are going to end up marrying the wrong person. And the reason that you're going to end up marrying the wrong person is because nobody is the right person. And then the people that do get married are the people that are the risk takers. And the people that are the risk takers are also the people that are very passionate. So therefore, if they're very passionate in an optimistic way, they are also very passionate in a mean Wait, I guess you'd say, like, and I was like, oh, he knows me. <laughs> like, I was just like, that makes a lot of sense. And it really does. It really truthfully does. So, because for each dark, there is a light. For each negative, there is a positive. You know, everything's got to balance everything out. And so that that's the reason, like, now thinking back, you know, my family being like, yeah. God, you have such a temper on you, you know, and God, you say some of the most hateful shit, you know. That's just like my sister that one time, man, she knocked my hat off my head. I told her not to do it. She did it again. I told her not to do it. She did it again. I picked it up and I smacked her with it. And then she turned around after crying for a few minutes and she's like, you're a bitch. And I was like, I learned from you. I was like, you're queen of the bitches, and you're my sister. You're my older sister. I'm just following in your shoes. And her boyfriend was like, oh, 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 oh. and he's like, oh, snap. And he's like, you just burnt her ass. <laughs> I was like, well, <clears throat> the truth hurts. Oh, Lord, does it. But, um, anyways, I guess that's the reason, like, maybe I'm going to live a life where not a lot of people like me, and I'm just going to have to be okay with it. And concluding I've been this okay with it, I think I can be okay with it the rest of my life. <sighs> but anyways, so, uh, another thing, too, about the cartilage, uh, disease and stuff like that is I tried to have my ears pierced when I was younger, and it just wouldn't take. They would not heal up. And when I got my ears pierced, it literally was like a goddamn firecracker went off. Like, I have never been, I have never been in as much pain and 
I don't know, agony, I guess, as I was getting my ears pierced. Like, that sounds insane, but it's true. Like, I don't know. And then also, though, it might have been the noise of the crack of my cartilage that just startled me, like, like psychologically and emotionally because of the, the trauma that I've endured in my life and, like, the screaming and the yelling and shit like that. And so it's just like, oh, my God, what the fuck was that noise, you know? And it was just this loud, I mean, it literally sounded like a cannon went off in my ear, like, right in my fucking ear. And, like, my whole side, like, of my fucking face, like, turned red and everything. And it's like, oh, my God, she's going to stroke out, you know, type deal. And, like, I don't know. Like, it was bad. And we tried to get them to heal for, like, months, I believe. Like, at least six weeks. And they wouldn't show any signs of healing. They just kept crusting up and oozing in the back. And it didn't matter if I cleaned them. It didn't matter if I didn't clean them. It didn't matter if I changed the cleaner. It didn't matter if I was on antibiotics. It didn't matter any damn thing. And you can still, and even when I was uh, hanging out with uh, EJ, which is the girl that I fell in love with. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> I'm trying to move on. I'm doing the best I can. But, uh. I was like, yeah, you can even feel it, you know, and I was like, here, you know, and everything, and she's like, you know, and she's like, oh my God, and I'm like, yeah, I know, because <laughs> you just feel all these little, it's almost like, uh, you know, it's like a broke plate in my fucking earlobe, you know, like a little tiny miniature just, <laughs> you know, and you feel all these cracks in it and everything. And I told my mom, too, I was like, I don't know if I want to do, like, my intuition, you know, I was like, I don't, I don't know if I want to do this. And then all of a sudden, you know, and I was just like, oh, my God. And I went running and hid, and they had to chase me down to get my other ear pierced. Like, and this one didn't hurt as bad, thank God, as this one did. But Jesus Christ. <sighs> And then I've still been, you know, like, I kind of want to try to have my ears pierced again. But I'm like, uh, they will not heal with regular. But then ever since they've come out with, like, gauges and the different types of, like, plastic and stuff and everything, I'm like, maybe, you know, may maybe <laughs> it might work. And then that scares me, too, because of tattoos and, uh, like... If I'm having this type of reaction and I'm very allergic and I have very bad allergies to all kinds of stuff and everything, I'm like, if I ever get a tattoo, because I don't have any, I'm like, I better not fucking die. Just, you know, oh, what happened? She, she got her first little itty bitty tattoo just to see if she could take the pain and it killed her. You know, <laughs> like, <laughs> it killed her because she had an allergic reaction to it. And, you know, she couldn't stop it and... You know, they told her that they'd have to cut the skin off, you know, and stitch her shut to remove the... I mean, like, that that's what, you know, like, that sounds insane, but that's kind of like the uh, hypochondriac side of my mind because of what happened with my damn ears and because of all the allergies that I've had and being around ragweed. I will, like, I, I won't literally go blind, but, I like, I'll be like this. Like, I will not see shit. Like, I will not see shit. And... I mean, that, that's that's kind of a good experience to go through, I guess. Like, if you don't really have to want to, I don't know. But <laughs> it's something to go through because you learn how to rely on your senses, on how to hear and how to feel. Because I don't know how many times that happened while I was outside. And it's like, okay, I got to find my way back in the house by myself. And then it's like, okay, I got to piss now. So now I got to find my way to the bathroom. Or, oh, I'm thirsty now. So I got to feel my way to the refrigerator. I don't know how many times I tripped over shit. God dang. <clears throat> and then that's another thing, too. Like, if a doctor were to watch this or whatever. I've always had very healthy um, nails for the most part. Now, not now, since I've gotten older and stuff like my my big toenails are acting insane, but uh, for as far as I don't know, but my my nails have always grown like crazy, like literally like fucking weeds, basically. Like I'm constantly having to cut them all the time, and then 
my ring finger and my pinky, they grow faster. And I always worried. I was like, people are going to think I'm like a fucking, you know, drug addict sitting here, you know, snorting shit because my nails just grow so quick and I don't cut them all the time regularly like I'm supposed to, I guess. But, uh, anyways, just a bunch of sh weird shit about my body and me and my family and stuff like that to talk about. But, uh, yeah, so, uh, and then back to dealing with, like, personal right now and stuff like that, it's like, no man, uh, no man, no man, I gotta get used to saying that, but, uh, I guess that's how he pronounces it, I don't even know, cause, like, it's, but it's nice, I'm not gonna lie, it's nice, but it was nice also talking to Honest when I was talking to Honest, but, what happened between me and Honest really fucked me over real good, like, royally. Because, like, I fell in love with that EJ girl, and then EJ's like, no, I don't love you. And then I'm like, okay, and then I'm trying to get over it, and then I'm like, hey. And I remember Jason, and so I was like, hmm, you know. And then, guys always want the commitment of sex for some fucking reason. And then it's like, that they'll give you the bullshit of, if you have sex with me, then, then I'll consider you my girlfriend. Or then I'll consider you my wife. Or then I'll consider you my this. Or then I'll marry you. Or then I'll date you. Or then, no, uh, no, 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 no. Heather, don't play that shit. Heather, don't play that shit, okay? You else with me? Or you ain't? End of subject. Sex ain't got shit to do with it. Because at the end of the day, there's no guarantee that I'm going to be able to have sex every day you know, that you want to have sex for the rest of your or my life. Like, to put an ultimatum like that on a relationship, and then I even catch myself doing it sometimes because with no one, I'm like, a, I'm like, you know, don't, don't bullshit with me, basically. And I'm like, don't lie to me, you know, and I'm like, don't leave me, you know, and he's like, I won't, you know, and I'm like, mm-hmm. We'll see, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and I'm like, well, we'll see, we'll see how that goes, because that hadn't went too well before, you know, <laughs> it's like, uh, yeah, but, uh, <laughs> and I'm like, can, can you handle all, all of this, and I don't mean it in a, in a, in a way that you might enjoy it, I mean it like, you're gonna be like, damn, that was a roller coaster ride from hell, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, and I'm like, can, can you? And he's like, yeah, you know, and all this. And I'm like, oh, okay, you know. And I'm like, you realize this is all on you, like, because my life is shit, you know, and I can't. And he's like, yeah, and he's like, I'm going to provide, you know. And I'm like, okay, 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 okay. You know, like, I want to believe so bad, and I'm going to try to, damn it. You know, but I'm just like... And it's like, at first, you know, I thought that it was all like, you know, a joke and everything and like dealing with honest and the way that he did me. And then all the people that like flooded me after that, I'm like, oh my God, this boy went and took all this and ran his mouth and said some lying ass shit, you know? And so now I got all these people that are like, hey, baby doll. And I'm like, fuck off. You know, and I'm just like, oh, I'm going to kill somebody, you know. And then I'm still like trying to be nice to Honest because uh, we, we talked the other day. And then uh, he's like, I need you. And I'm like, huh? You know, and he's like, I, I need you as a friend. And there's part of me that wants to be a little cocky shit and be like, of course you do. I know you do. Everybody needs me as a friend. I'm fucking fantastic. You know, like, <laughs> like, have you met me? You know, like, I want to be cocky like that, but at the end of the day, I'm not, you know, so I'm just like, well, you know, yeah, I'd appreciate your friendship too, especially if you wouldn't have thrown me up under the goddamn bus to fucking begin with and been a little lying, manipulative douchebag, but you decided to go that route, didn't you, sweetheart? So now I have to forgive you, and you better be glad that I'm willing to do that because I don't do that for a lot of people. I don't do that for a lot of people at all. So, anyways, 
But like, I know, I know that people are lonely and sad and all this and everything out in the world, but I can't take care of the whole fucking world. But I can teach people how to take care of the people, you know, it's like the ripple effect, you know? So like, if I'm kind to people, you know, and it's like paying it forward. If I'm kind to these people, then these people should go and be kind to these people. And those people should go and be kind to those people. And then so on and so forth until everybody's just very fucking kind to each other, okay? Because that's the way it's supposed to be. You should be not to each other. <laughs> like, you're supposed to be kind. But I can't sit here and babysit and pamper and all this and deal with people, everybody else's mental health problems, you know, or whatever that they may have because, you know, or just their, their temper tantrums if they're really young or if they're really immature or however they go through handling themselves. I'm not sitting here like, I'm better than you, you know, like, no, it's not like that. But it's just, I'm going to tolerate what I can tolerate and you need to stop trying to make me tolerate more than what I'm going to. Because when you try to make me tolerate more than what I'm going to tolerate, that's when we're going to have a huge, massive problem. So, anyways, it's just like, calm, calm down. You know? Yeah, everybody is important. Everybody, okay? Everybody, okay? Even the fucked up people. Okay, they, I mean, I've met some, I've seen some, I've been around some, and I've heard of some. <sighs> but we are all here for some reason. We all have a purpose to fulfill, and I firmly believe in that. So therefore, that's what we need to be focused on, and that's what we need to be. And this whole misery loves company and, you know, and all that and feeling sad and sorry for yourself and bullshit like that. We just need to learn to get over that. And I see that's why that, like, a bunch of people are like, oh, you battle depression? Oh, you battle anxiety? Well, suck it up, buttercup, and get the fuck over it, you know? Like, I get how they're like that and everything, but it's like, um, you can't sometimes. Sometimes you can't do what people are asking of you. Some kind, sometimes you cannot do what is technically supposedly required of you because it's just not time. It's just not time. It's not that there is anything wrong with you. It's not that there is anything wrong with the other people involved. It's not that there is anything wrong or bad about it at all. And for some reason, our minds is like, oh my God, red flag, fucking alert, you know, and like uh, abandon all ships, you know, and all this and everything. And it's like, no, just breathe and calm the fuck down and realize that it's just not time. Anxiety, okay, for instance. You walk into a fucking store and say there's five different brands of something that your kid desperately needs, you know, like they, they, you know, like, uh, I don't know, say, say it's their favorite snack food when they're sick and they haven't been sick for five years and because it's like a comfort snack for them, you know, like, you know, like, they, they've been moping around the house for two weeks, you know, feeling horrible and like shit, and you've done everything you can to take care of them, and then you're like, you know, and then they just break down crying in the fucking floor, and you're like, what is it? What's wrong? What do you need, baby? I know you're sick, and I'm trying to take care of you, and they're like, I just want my, you know, this snack, you know, whatever it is, or some shit like that, and so you're like, okay, okay, and you run out to the store, you know, and you get there, and it's like, Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. They've come out with different brands. Oh, should I stick to the same brand that my kid has always liked or should I try the new brand? Well, the new brand looks better and the, that's a brand that's a company that's even better than the brand that they liked before. And should I get that? And I don't know. And You know, <sighs> breathe, motherfucker. Breathe. Okay? Breathe. That anxiety is not you. That anxiety is society. Okay? That is not you. You need to learn to separate that shit from yourself. And it's hard. 
and your mind will sit there and fucking lie to you and tell you that it's you. No, it's you. You got figured out now. Oh my God, it's life or death. You're going to fucking, like, World War Three is going to break out if you don't fucking, you know, do it now. And it's like, no, it won't. Just like if you commit suicide, life goes on. People go on. So if you take 45 minutes, if you take three hours standing there looking at something, you know, contemplating, you know, which is the best, you're, you're not going to fucking die from it. And people are not going to die, you know, because of this dependency that they may have tried to put on you that is not yours to cater, cater to, basically. Like, it's not your responsibility. You're responsible for yourself and the decisions. This is the key. The decisions that you make. Just like me, putting these YouTube videos up. I don't know if something good's going to come of it. I don't know if something bad's going to come of it. I don't know if anything's even going to come of it. It might just be like, bleh. You know? Like, and in all honesty, that's that's kind of where I'm at, and that's kind of what I'm okay with. And I'm just like, okay. That's the reason I'm not pushing real hard to try to make it perfect or anything, because that was not the reason for me to start doing this. And I'm not sitting here and trying to do anything that's going to make my life any worse than what it is because I don't want my life to be any worse than what it is, simply put. Um, and there might be people that watch my videos and they're like, oh my god, I can't believe she said that. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm gonna <laughs> you know, and all that shit. And it's just like, you take your <laughs> and <laughs> you know, and go the fuck on with it. Basically, <laughs> that's all I gotta say. You know, because like you take your vibration with you where it's going. Your negativity, your hatefulness, your cloud that follows you around everywhere. Your pity, your this, your that, you know, and everything. And I'm going to stay over here with acceptance as best as I can, you know. And that's where I've always stayed. So people like me and they're like, what? why do I like her? A-C-C-E-P-T-E-N-C-E, -E -E, right? Or is it A-N? It's E-N. But accept. A-C-C-E-P-T. Accept. Right? I think that's right. Yeah. I, I ain't spelled out loud in a really long time other than a few words to my kid, which was mainly basic stuff when she was younger. I used to be good at spelling. I used to be fucking excellent at it, man. Like, I used to want to be a literature teacher so bad. But, um... Uh, I wanted to be an English literature teacher, but, uh, and I might be one day, but it ain't right now, and I used to do pretty damn good at the spelling bees. I never, uh, went to, like, the finals or anything like that, but there, especially the last two years that we even had the tryouts for it and everything, I, I was up there with, like, the last few, you know, but I didn't, I didn't make it, but still, I was like... God, you know, and the thing is, is like, they don't, they don't give you a paper to take home to your parents, and my parents think I'm like a fucking moron that can't read and can't write and shit, and so I'm like, you know, and like, I was in IEP classes, so like, I try to go back to them and be like, hey, I'm doing amazing at my reading and writing, you know, like, and even when I quit school, they was like, uh, what was it, I was... I think I was two years ahead, if I remember correctly, don't hold me to it, but I think I was two years ahead in my reading, like for everybody in the school, like what we were expected to read at, like our reading level, and I was two years ahead, like of that, like I was two years ahead of my senior year, so basically it's like sophomore, you know, or whatever, or, you know, in college, you know. And, uh, trying to explain that to people, but just don't, you know, they, they don't believe in you, you know, like you go home and you're like, Hey, I can read really good. And they're like, no, you can't. You're a fucking moron. And that's, that's almost like, it's almost like my brain has an emotional stutter. <laughs> there you go. But they're, they're, I mean, legitimately like legit because the neglect. 
So I have an emotional stutter. Because that's where stuttering can originate from. Stuttering can, I'm not saying all stuttering does, but stuttering can originate from just a fear, basically. Where you try to speak and somebody yells at you. And that sticks with you from there on out. And so from there on out, you you develop this stuttering. And it's just this nervousness, this nervous tick that got set off in your mind. Well, that's me with my emotions. So, yeah. Figure that shit out. But, um, anyways. So, I have an emotional stutter. But, I'm at 50 minutes, so I'm going to end this video here. I hope everybody's doing good. Keep putting your best foot forward. If you want to talk to me, you can look me up on Facebook. Um, the same name, same profile photo. And you can send me a friend request, or you can send me a message, and we can talk that way. I'm not going to put up with haters. I'm not going to put up with people trying to con me. I'm not going to put up with liars. I don't put up with people's shit. And even if you think like a little snake and you're like, oh yeah, you will, you'll put up with mine. You'll be surprised that one day it'll come and I won't put up with it no more. And then you'll be like on this panic shit of thinking you should shove your head more up my ass. And... You're going to find out it don't do shit to me, basically. And I'm just like, can I help you? You know, like, so anyways, I don't know. And this, this is me becoming more in my comfort zone and this and that and everything. And then plus my birthday will be next month. So maybe that's why, you know, good karma and good flow and all that and everything. Because if you believe in zodiac signs, it is, uh, your birth month and your birthday, that's supposed to be the luckiest time for you. And then six months from that is supposed to be the worst time for you during the year and stuff. So maybe, you know, I really need some good times. <laughs> but, uh, so I hope everybody's doing good. Keep putting your best foot forward. Take care. And like I said, you need me to talk to, you can if you want. You know, you don't have to. Don't feel obligated to. Still don't know if I'm going to shave my head or not. Because I was seriously thinking about that a lot earlier today. I thought about it like three times. And I was like, just go and do it. Just go and do it. Just go and do it. And then I'm sitting there and I'm like, but if things work out. And that's the thing though, is like you, you put that but, you know, because of something else. You're allowing something to influence you. And one of the things that's influencing me is the fact that I'm talking to Noman. And I'm like... Would he like me? You know, and then I'm like, well, fuck, if he wouldn't like me, then the hell, he doesn't need to be with me anyways. Like, you know, but then I'm like, but if things progress, how do I want to look? And then that's the thing. How do I want to look? Because sometimes I look at my hair and sometimes I like it. Other times I look at it and I fucking hate it. You know, and sometimes I like it when it's wavy or curly and it's it's natural, you know, or when I braid it and I like braiding it, you know. I used to like braiding it a lot more, um, but I like French braiding it back and stuff like that. I like the way that it looks. and So, I don't know. You know, everything has a good and a bad, a pro and a con to it. So, if I keep my hair, then I have pros and cons to weigh out. And if I shave my head, I have pros and cons to weigh out. And if I ever get dreadlocks, I have pros and cons to weigh out. And if I ever get just a short haircut, I have pros. You know, everything has pros and cons. And so I'm just like, what are those? You know, and even though I've thought about them, debated them for years, and I'm 30, and I'm fixing to turn 31, and stuff like that, I'm just like, I don't know. So, yeah. But, um... So I'm going to end it here. I hope everybody's doing good. And I'll catch you later. Take care. Bye.